Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. Today we're going to be going over hierarchical sheets, which is a part of the E schema or the schematic program. So this is a way that you can extend your schematics to have more pages. And that's often a question I get is like, well, I, I want to have more than one page. And sometimes people just enlarge their page, and I can show you how to do that if you want. But another way to do it is you basically add more pages to your schematic. Now, if you don't want to actually connect things between the different pages of your schematic, that's fine. But then you need to make all of your signals global labels. And then your top page will just be pretty much like an index page. Or if you do want to, you can actually hook you can basically visualize that sub page and then hook signals into it. And that's what we're going to show you here today. So let's take a look at that over on this existing schematic we have. So in this case, this is the latter. We basically have uh, a bunch of uh, sub pages here. Oh, and this is for later. Uh, <laughs> we have a bunch of sub pages here where we have signals on the top layer. We basically, this is a regulator, this is a divider here. And then we also have. Uh, we have signals coming in and out of these different pages here. If we want to go down into a subpage here, or a hierarchical sheet, what we can do is either one of two things. We can right click and hit Enter Sheet, or we can double click, and that takes us into that subsheet. And what you do see here down, down in the bottom right, it says two out of five. So there's five total sheets in this uh, schematic, and this one is page two. OK, so now we go back up. We can go down into the other pages as well and go back up. OK, great. And so now these are actually very similar sheets. And what I did is I, I made one sheet, and then I replicated it over and over again. And hierarchical sheets are another way you can kind of bundle up your design and make, uh, you know, make blocks that you reuse. Now, it's not as good as some other layout programs, uh, I will say that. And I think that's a future thing that's coming for KiCad. But uh, for right now, I think it's more of a manual thing. If you want to make lots of different uh, you know, repeatable blocks, you're going to have to do some of it manually. And I will say that up front. In this case, this is actually what I was doing. I was doing different channels, uh, different channels of uh, light detector. That's what this board is, and it actually uses the the uh, two quad components, so two different uh, physical parts that had four components in them. I basically said, okay, well, channel uh, this is channel three. It looks like uh, uh, channel two, rather. I guess it's channel two, and this is using uh, part C and part D of these different uh, these different quad op, op amps and uh, comparators. So uh, let's go and take a look at how we actually create a new hierarchical sheet. So the, the menus are over here on the right. First thing you want to do is uh, create a new hierarchical sheet with this logo. The logos are a little bit confusing. I will be honest about that. I'm going to click and drag, and that'll create a new sheet here. Okay, and then it's going to prompt me, "What do you want to call the actual file name?" Because it will create a new file. So we're going to call this new sheet one. .sch. You need to have .sch on it, and you know to correspond with file systems, I usually make sure I don't have any spaces in there. I will add spaces in the sheet name, which is what's going to show up at the top of the the uh, the actual thing here. So the sheet name is up here, the file name is down here. If we double click and go in here, it's just a blank sheet, right? And now we see that this is page six of six. Okay. Now. Uh, one of the other things you'll notice about hierarchical sheets is that there's signals coming in and out of these. Now, like I said, this is a uh, this is an optional thing. If you want to, you can just you know use the top page as a way to list all of your subsheets and not have any signals doing that. And first things first, let's say if you say in e oops wow in either case, um, if you didn't want to use signals going in and out of the sheets, you would do something like these. These are called global labels. If you want to place a new one here, we just it's just like placing a, a regular label, and we can call this, you know, test signal. And if we put test signal on the top layer, and we put test signal on any of the other sublayers, right? So if we go and put t test signal in here, right? If we, if this is test, now it will be connected. That is an important thing to know. However, if I do something like this, if I delete this one, and then I use the label, so I hit L for label, and then I put test here. This is not guaranteed. Now, this is the same as a net label, right, over on the right side here. This is not guaranteed to be connected because sometimes you want to have signals that are just within the sheet that might repeat. So if you have, uh, if you have, uh, if you're copying schematics from one thing to another, you, um, if you have multiple versions of the same sub circuit, you don't necessarily want to have all of those nets connected. And so in that, in that case of having a local label named test, you might want to have that on page 4, 5, and 6, but you don't want them all connected on the physical, uh, the physical layout. And so that's the difference between global and, uh, and local labels like that. So now let's go into one of these, these here, and we'll see that, OK, so in this case, vground was not passed in through an actual uh, signal at the top layer. It was passed in through a global label, right? And same thing, uh, so. Uh, yeah, so vground is shared here. Uh, if we go to the top sheet, this one, 
you'll see that there actually is power rails being used for, uh, for the, the op amp and the comparator here. In the same case here, three volts is being passed in via a global label, not through another label. So that's an important distinction here. Now what you will see here is that there are other types of labels. These are called hierarchical labels now. And if we want to place a new one, we can do that here, right? So if we want to place a new one, this looks very similar, but what's going to happen is it looks, it looks different, right? So again, if we call this test, now we have a test label here. We can hook it up to whatever. Okay, we've hooked that up. Now what happens? Well, this is now a signal that is capable of going in or out through the top of that sheet and connecting at the top layer. So let's go to the top sheet. And then I'm going to go, it's in this channel one where we just added that. And now I'm going to right click on the part and I'm going to say import sheet pins. And now we see that because I created that sub, sub label there, I can place that at the top level and I can go and make a new connection to that from the top layer. And this is the only way that I'm going to be able to get an access to, to this hierarchical type of, of label, right? I actually have to physically route a pin. Well, not physically. I have to you know, graphically route a pin from one point to another in order to actually connect those things here. So um, <clears throat> these are kind of the, the different ways you can pass signals through. So like, let's just review them one more time. So we have, uh, we have global labels, the one, the one I just deleted. Uh, we have local labels, right? If you hit L, this is just a label that you might put on you know, a, uh, we might call this, so if you wanted to label this net as on off, right, this is only going to be on this one page. It's not going to connect if we put on off locally in any of the other pages, it's not going to connect, right? And so that's another thing you have to be careful about. It's going to probably throw errors if you have, so I called everything test in this case. I had a local label, a global label, and a hierarchical label all called test. That's probably a really bad idea. I would recommend that whenever you're creating labels, you give them unique names so that you do so. Another thing you'll note here is that these, you can also make these in and out pins, right? So in this case, this is ref out. I actually, I moused over, I hit E, I select the pin, and it actually selected as an output. Now that won't actually change anything. Uh, it might throw some errors in ERC, but, it, or sorry, some er warnings, not errors, but it won't actually stop you from doing anything. So this is just a, a graphical showing that this is an output pin, and then it's going down and it's sharing the, the, that signal voltage with all these other sub sheets here. So, so ref in is shared of among these other three, these other three sub sheets here. <clears throat> One last thing, if you want to actually look at all the sheets that you have, you can go to the navigator, right? So the top page is just called root. And then now we see we have channel one photo detect one, two, four, three, and then sheet one. Um, and that's just because of the order, I believe, uh, that they were, they were added. Uh, and finally, if you want to actually go and print multiple pages here, like, like I said, there are multiple pages here. So we've gone over printing one time, but if we go to a preview, we can see that there actually are, so there's page one, oops, up here. There's two, three, four, five, six. And that's the blank one we just added. So there are lots of uh, you know, different, different ways this gets used. In terms of how and whether you should be doing this on your schematics, you know, that's really up to you. Uh, you know, this is something that we go over in contextual electronics on a regular basis. Like, should we, uh, should we be connecting things like at the hierarchical level? Sometimes it's just for a cleanliness thing. Sometimes it's uh, for more of a modular approach. Like, if you're going to have lots of channels here, like we did. Uh, personally, I like doing it, but I don't hook every, as you saw in the schematic there, I don't hook every signal through the top layer of the hierarchical sheet because I think that that gets uh, really messy. So like I showed, three volts and, and vground were both passed in as global labels because if I had three volts and vground wired to every single, uh, every single sheet there as a symbol, I think that actually would get kind of messy. Um, so it's up to you how much you want to, you know, uh, pass to each hierarchical sheet. I like to almost treat the hierarchical sheet like a component, and uh, you know, you're basically creating a new component with pins in and out. And the, th the thing that's nice about it is that you can really visualize from a high level what actually needs to go in there. So if you have a spy bus being passed in, you know, very simply, if you look at like, a, say, you have a temperature sensor in a subsheet, and it has a spy bus uh, coming out the top of that subsheet. Uh, then you know when you're starting to go program, you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna have to have a spy bus hooked up there. So it can really help from a visualization standpoint. Like I said, we go over more of this, this kind of uh, whether you should or shouldn't do it in Contextual Electronics. You can sign up over at contextualelectronics.com. We have some free courses, we have some paid courses, and always you can go over to the forum where we discuss this stuff on a regular basis. That's forum.contextualelectronics.com. Finally, if you have any questions about the, the feature itself, you can go over to the KiCad forum. That's forum.kicad.info, where a lot of the developers hang out and people who are struggling through their problems kind of talk through this stuff. That's all for now. We'll talk more about hierarchical sheets and schematics and more here on Contextual Electronics. Thanks for watching.